Welcome to this short service of prayers, readings and reflection on life's pilgrim journey. We gather near the place where St David found closeness with God. Knowing God best, as Christians have done throughout the ages, as Creator, Father, Redeeming Son, and Life-Giving Holy Spirit. We pray that we also know God's closeness, His compassionate love, and His wise direction in our lives. We begin with the Collect, the special prayer for St David, who called others to be joyful, to keep the faith, and to be faithful in the little things of life. Let us pray. God our Father, you gave St David to the people of Wales to uphold the faith. Encouraged by his example, may we joyfully hold fast to the things which lead to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be your honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. A reading from St. John's Gospel, chapter 20. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace unto you. And when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Holy Week began with joy and ended with victory. The prophet Isaiah presented his picture of the suffering servant. He spoke of Jesus as despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And with that image of the Messiah, Jesus identified himself. And so although the common people heard gladly, because he spoke with authority, he had intrigued people with his parables, with his miracles, his sharing of people's pain, he met their needs and searched for the lost, recovered the struggler and bandaged the hurt. But he was dragged before accusers, rejected by the people, made to wear a crown of thorns and compelled to carry his own cross to his crucifixion. Why? Why did they do such a thing to Jesus? How could they? It's quite sad that we got quite lost at one time during the Holy Week in the busyness, trying so many ways to offer for so many people, young and old, a taste of what was actually happening during Holy Week. But on Good Friday, we were left thinking and feeling, why? And then on Easter Day, great proclamation of the Lord is risen, is risen indeed. And the cry of Alleluia rang out in exaltation and great joy. And wherever the Christians were gathered together on that Easter Day, Hosanna. Alleluia, and rightly so too, because the sadness and the sombre feelings aroused by the reputation of the journey through Holy Week had given way to a great sense of triumph. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as always, there may be disagreements among believers on the literal aspect of the resurrection story, but of the reality of his continued presence as the risen Lord, there is no doubt. When Mary Magdalene first arrived at the tomb, 
looked at him horrified. The angels asked her, why are you seeking the living amongst the dead? Jesus wasn't there. He is not here. And the resurrection is a cornerstone of our faith. Yes, doubts abound, and many people have them. And those doubts were definitely shared even within the circle of the disciples, and perhaps Thomas speaks for many. Nevertheless, the group of disciples maintained their group. They stabilized it, shared many hours in deep prayer. They were of one accord. And the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, were all very much involved too. The disciples had to take on practical things, like appointing her successor to Judas, a betrayer. They needed their band to be back to their number. And that mutual support was continuing through all the horrors and the doubts and the fears that they had experienced. To Mary Magdalene, Jesus told her, go, go and tell the others. She had a very important message to relay to the others, to pass it on. Yes, messages can get lost in translation. I'm sure you've often played the Chinese whisper game. And messages and things that are passed on can differ slightly. That resurrection day must have been a very, very long one for the disciples. So when Jesus actually appeared, it was to commission them, to give them new works to do. And a lifetime may have seemed to have passed by for those disciples as they remembered, as they recalled. But Jesus was telling them there is still work to do. And maybe the whole time that the disciples were with Jesus was a preparation for that being sent out. And each year as Christians we are called upon to deliver afresh that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He's risen indeed. And that message that has been passed on from centuries, from people to people, should be just as Mary Magdalene bore it to the apostles. But still, like her, some will believe, some will have doubts, some will say, I need more proof, and others will disregard it completely. Mary's message to the apostles was not added to, nothing was omitted, nothing lost in translation. She delivered it as it was, regardless of how others received it. And still today, it doesn't matter how others receive it or question it, we have that message to deliver, the good news of Easter, the message of the Gospels. And we must be faithful in delivering as messengers. For as messengers and apostles are sent, nothing should be edited in the translation or the transmission of that news. We deliver the Easter message and proclaim the good news of the Gospels, plainly in truth, in all we say and all we do. The Lord is risen, is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. You are invited now to ponder on your own pilgrim journey. Perhaps you want to reflect over many years. Or perhaps it's just a few days, or maybe the journey of this morning that comes to mind. Ask yourself, what brought you here? 
Where are you now in life? What are you seeking? Let us pray. Living Lord, your resurrection startled the guards and friends alike. Scatter the fears that strife brings into our lives. Breathe now new life into our common living. And living Lord, you make no distinction between people. Transform the narrowness of our vision and judgment. Meet us and greet us in our journey together. For living Lord, your mercy endures forever. Strengthen and sustain all whose spirits are weak and whose lives are gripped by pain and distress. We will give you thanks for your great goodness. Living Lord, confused friends left your empty tomb in both fear and great joy. We hold before you the sadness of loss and the joy of our hope in you. For Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Amen. We pray for ourselves and others who visit this cathedral today. Lord Jesus Christ, St. David's Saviour and Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Be our way. Give us grace to follow your lead. Courage to persevere when the going gets tough. And when we stumble, let us not be afraid to take hold of your outstretched hand as you offer us a fresh start. Be our truth. Give us your wisdom so we may know how to walk in the paths of honesty and integrity. Be our life. Revive us when we falter. Refresh us when we tire and bring us to share in your risen life, now and for all eternity. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us in the language of your choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In a time of silence, you may wish to reflect on how you desire to go forward from here. Remember, in compassionate love, Jesus Christ calls you to follow him, promising in return his companionship, guidance, strength, and peace, whatever life brings. We close with prayer, after which please do stay and enjoy this holy place for as long as you like. All who wish are invited to come forward for anointing with holy oil, with prayer for God's strength and guidance, healing and wholeness in life's unfolding journey. Let us pray. Almighty God, awaken in us the zeal of your servant David, that we may joyfully follow you in singleness of heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.